We already met the biggest bitch of the millennium, Wang Zing, in episode one. And yes, it is 2020, and Wang Zing is still a bitch. 2020. Hey everyone, how are y'all doing? My name is Deborah. Welcome to another edition of T-Rama with Deborah, where we discuss our favorite dramas. And today I'm gonna be telling you about the drama that I have been obsessed with since last year and I've literally, it's the only, it's one of the actual only reasons I could think of in 2019 as to why I was looking forward to 2020 and when it finally came, I had a lot of thoughts. Anyways, without further ado, we are going to be talking about Evernight 2. Yes, you heard that right. Evernight, that Evernight 2. Without further ado, grab your tea mugs and come along with me on this journey as I tell you what my first impressions are about the second season of Evernight. Let's go. Yeah. has aired 12 episodes are currently out i've only watched six well six episodes are out for just normal people if you have we tv vip 12 episodes are out and stuff and um i do have vip but i just haven't gotten to the rest of the six episodes because i literally work 80 hours a week not that you care you came here for some other tea and i'm gonna give you the tea you came for but um evernight 2 is a continuation of evernight 1 and um i thought about this for a while I'm like do i want to give them a summary i don't really think they want to sit down here and listen to a summary i mean if you're watching evernight 2 you had to watch evernight 1 right but if you haven't watched evernight 2 don't worry the directors have your back why do i say that because in the first 10 minutes of the drama they literally give you a recap no it's not even 10 minutes like the first four minutes of the drama they give you the best recap you can ever get that made me start wondering why the heck i watched the season one but then when i turn about it i'm like uh yeah this missed a lot of the whole emotional intensity and everything that made me fall in love with episode one like you need to have watched it to leave it to understand it and stuff so yeah i mean you won't be confused if you didn't watch evernight one and you just jump into evernight two because because they did give that summary which kind of reminds me of like most of the summaries that um Zanzia or like Wuzia dramas do in the beginning where they say 10,000 years ago XXX happened and blah 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 and now as you're going along with the story you want to go back to it and try and remember okay what did they say happened in the beginning again to see how this is connected to this so I guess it's one of those recaps that is a lot of information in such a little time that you have to keep going back to it if you never watch season one to kind of refresh your memory and okay who did what and who did what but the good thing about about it is you don't even really need to do that why because they keep giving you recaps the characters keep giving you recaps as you go along the first few episodes where they remind you about what happened how they met how they became friends and how they literally where they are today i ain't even kidding guys so that's something that i'm still trying to decide if i like or i don't like like the recaps like at certain points i like it because i see the former characters that i loved or the former actors because they did change some of the actors which i will get into in a little bit and i'm like okay i i think i think i'm here for this and then at a certain point i'm like oh my gosh i miss original things way but now that i have gone into that territory let's talk about it so in case you don't know they basically changed some of the characters like um ye ye hong yu is no longer our ye hong yu which really really sucks i'm still trying to get used to this ye hong yu that they have now but she is not our ye hong yu and i'll get into why i'm kind of okay with the character changes also in a little bit but she's not that ye hong yu that ye hong yu literally grew on me so it's taking a bit more of an effort for this ye hong yu to actually grow on me someone else that they changed is our main character nin zui who was played by otter chen chen fei yu before but now He's played by Wang Hei Di, Dylan Wang from Meteor Garden. You may know him from that. And this is something that at first when I heard that, oh, they were going to change him and stuff last year, I wasn't happy about it. Not because I don't love Dylan Wang. I love Dylan Wang as Dylan Wang and I love uh, Chen Fei as Chen Fei. But when you've watched and gone through so much episodes as we did or I did with Evernight, you grow so attached to the character, especially Chen Fei Yu. The fact that Chen Fei Yu did such a great job that I came to absolutely love the drama. Like I said, it was the only reason that I was actually looking forward to 2020. Apart from the fact that, well, I'll be alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But, 
um, um, I had grown so attached to the character, so I wasn't really sure how I felt about them changing it. But the more teasers I saw, the more trailers I saw, the more I started getting used to the idea of okay, Ninze is gone, and one KD is gonna be Ningze, and I should get used to this fact. And so when the trailer dropped, I literally lost my mind. I'm like, okay, I really, really like this, but I will have to admit there was something I noticed in the trailer that I was kind of worried about. And we'll get into that too in a little bit. But I noticed that um, the CGI wasn't as great and spotless and perfect like season one in the trailer. We'll go into the drama itself in a little bit. So I was kind of worried about that. I felt, oh my goodness, is it because Tencent is producing this? Did they just spend, did they just do this as a cash grab? Is this gonna suck? Just the CGI, that's what I'm talking about. The story itself got me all prepared for war. Like, let's do this, let's go. It's us against the wall, means they, I have your back, let's do this. So that was how I felt. And then when the series itself dropped and I watched the series, I have to admit that I definitely did miss Newsway. Like, why I miss Newsway, I have to also admit that I like one Hades character as Newsway. And let me explain why I am kind of growing into the whole one Hades character as Newsway or what convinced me that I was totally okay with this change. 100% when something happens. So, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in season one, if you're here from season one, or if you're not here from season one, then just follow along, you get my point. But in season one, you remember how there was a fan war about uh, Ning Zue and Mo Shan Shan, or Ning Zue and Sang Sang, and most people felt like they couldn't feel a romantic relationship between Sang Sang and Ning Zue because of how the director made it seem like they were literally just slave and master, which they can't wear, but they had more a more bond than that that many people didn't see. I was one of the people who saw it. I was seeing Sang Sang from the beginning and stuff, so I I could see it, but if they had left Chen Fei Yu as Ming Zui, it would have still caused problems in this new season for people who would be like, oh no, Ming Zui needs to be with Mo Shan Shan and not Sang Sang and stuff like that. And if I'm being honest, while I wanted Sang Sang to be with Ming Zui, I wouldn't actually have been shipping their romance as much as I am with Wang Hei So changing the face of Ning Zui helps me really visualize, okay, the Ning Zui that I was in love with Mo Shan Shan is gone and this is a new Ning Zui, a new Ning Zui that is not, not even in love because he wasn't in love with Mo Shan Shan as far as I was concerned, he was in lust, infatuated with her and stuff, it was a crush, his true love was uh, Sang Sang. But yeah, the Ningzui that was in love with Mo Shan Shan is gone and this is a matured Ningzui, a grown up Ningzui that can have a romance with Sang Sang and we won't feel weird about it because we never saw the face of Wang Hedi with Mo Shan Shan. So hence, there was a part where Mo Shan Shan shows up at, I think it was episode, the end of episode 2 or episode 3, where Mo Shan Shan shows up and I was literally mad just seeing her face, like that's how much I really did not ship them. And I was really mad just seeing Mo Shan Shan, but when she came down from her horse and spoke to um, what's his name, Ning Zui, I was like, oh my goodness, I, I actually don't feel anything like I am, I am okay with this because he's not Chen Fei Yu, like, I am totally okay with this, I can't feel any love between them, like, I can feel something with Sang Sang, but I can't feel any love with them because they changed the actor, so I guess this is one great thing about them changing Chen Fei Yu for people who really really cares about the romance in uh, Evernight the good news and the people who are Team Sang Sang the good news is you won't really see that connection with Mo Shan Shan at least I haven't seen it yet because it's starting afresh and it's him and Sang Sang in the beginning like it starts with the romance with Shan um, Sang Sang and not Mo Shan Shan so if you are going into season 2 without ever having watched watch season 1 you will definitely be Team Sang Sang because you've already seen that Sang Sang and Ning Zui are in love with each other before Mo Shan Shan shows up unlike season 1 where it was kind of twisted in how they did it that they confused people into thinking he really really loved Mo Shan Shan but boyfriends and girlfriends out there no he didn't <laughs> anyways 
I mean, in terms of the acting for Wang Hei Di, there are moments where I miss Nizue, especially when he tries to act shameless. I definitely do miss the um, Chen Fei Yu's character of Nizue, but overall, I do like what Wang Hei Di is bringing into it. He's bringing a sort of maturity into it and a growth to the character, lightheartedness, like I said, and a difference and stuff that I wouldn't have seen seen in Chen Fei Yu's representation but then that makes me even feel weird saying it because we really don't know. Chen Fei Yu might have actually been able to do that also and convince us just like he convinced us in season 1. So yeah if you're getting into this and right now you're like I don't really like Wang KD's um, character as Nin Zue and stuff or portrayal of Nin Zue then just keep going give it time because I remember when we started season 1 I wasn't too convinced about Chen Fei Yu's uh, character as Min's way or portrayal of Min's way either but I got into it by the end of it and I was convinced he was the only Min's way that could ever be but here we are with one Hedy so just give it time and give him time because this is at the beginning episodes and he's getting into the character so let's see at episode 20 if you still feel the same way hopefully you stick around that long I'm just saying. So that's one reason why I really like the change of characters and another reason why I really like some of the change of characters that they've done in terms of like Ye Hong Yu and Ningzui is basically what I just said because like Ye Hong Yu why I can be okay with okay the change Ye Hong Yu is she's now the Grand Priestess priest, priestess say the word you know what I'm talking about she's now the Grand Priestess of like Zilin's Justice Department and things like that and the uh, Department of Light and all that shenanigans and she's no longer the former Ye Hong Yu that literally her aim was just to be like advancing 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 like she is now a powerhouse on her own right so them changing her face I'm kind of okay with it because of that because she's the new role she's not the Ye Hong Yu of the past who was literally just trying to increase levels and like kill Ning's way like she still wants to kill Ning's way but it's not like before if you get where I'm coming from so that's why I guess I'm okay with it I think the only person that I'm not okay with the change is the princess of Tang I really don't like the change maybe because her character hasn't really done anything yet so I can't really judge because we're just in six episodes and we've literally just seen her once where they're trying to introduce us to the characters again like oh this is the new princess guys in case you didn't notice we changed princess ha <laughs> and stuff like that so yeah that was the only real moment that we really did see her and stuff but um I haven't really grown into her because we don't know anything about how she's portraying the character yet so right now I don't really like the change because I haven't seen what she has to offer when I see what she has to offer my thoughts might change but that's just where I am right now but apart from the character change and all that I think Evernight, this Evernight is different from Evernight Season 1 in that this feels more light-hearted. Like there's times like Episode 5 where Ish got real. It hit the fan literally. But prior to that, it was so light-hearted and you could feel the body that was on Ninzwe's shoulders in Season 1 had been dropped, which kind of makes sense when you consider that Xiao Hu is dead and all and he had achieved what he wanted to achieve in season one so season two was kind of like a fresh start for everyone not just the characters the new characters but for us to the viewers and the story itself was like okay he has finished one thing that was his literal only aim in life what is left for him and stuff so that's how you start season two it's really light-hearted compared to season one like i said there's still the intense fights there's still everyone trying to Get Ning's way and San Tang and things like that, but it doesn't feel as deep as season one because he doesn't have that revenge on his shoulders. Like, I am going to murder. <coughs> Let me not spoil season one for you if you haven't watched season one, but I'm gonna murder somebody and stuff is basically what I'm gonna say. So, he doesn't have that on his back anymore, and instead, instead of trying to kill people like season one and trying to get justice in season two he's trying to protect so it's different because when you're protecting there's an element of love there well when you're seeking justice it's an element of like um what what would i call like a warrior like spirit a fight like spirit where you really are not paying attention to anything but like light <laughs> in the words of zealing and all but yeah so i really 
think that that's what makes season one different from season two so if you really like that deepness of season one and depth that season one had you wouldn't really find it in season two something else i actually also noticed with season two is it doesn't have that deep emotional connection that's why i said this depth is missing in season two don't get me wrong season two is still awesome it just doesn't have that emotional depth that really grabs at your heart like season one did for example there's a character that we meet in season two quite like immediately into the drama like a few episodes into the drama like i said i'm in episode six now and the character dies i won't tell you who he is but he's a very important good character that kind of reminds me of master yansei who for those of you who haven't watched season one was ninzwe's teacher that taught him how to make talismans in season one and before unlike when uh everything that happened to um teacher yansei happened to teacher yansei in season one where we felt so emotionally connected and when he left we cried and it broke our hearts in this season i feel like this particular person that passed away this particular character that passed away was supposed to be representative of teacher yansei but we didn't feel that much of an emotional connection to him because they basically relied on memories they didn't build that relationship between him ninzwe and sansang for us like there was a part where he fell sick and he was gonna pass away and they start showing memories of how he was playing with sang sang and his way and i kind of got mad i'm like wait why are you showing us all these memories that we never watched like i wanted to have watched it because if i had watched it i would have felt more of an emotional connection to this character yes i am happy he helped ninzwe and sang sang and his team ninzwe and sang sang but I'm not really feeling as bad as, you, as I should feel about his passing away because you didn't allow me to be emotionally connected to him like I was with DJ Yansei. So the remaining episodes that are coming up should better have a good reason as to why you sped up his death so much and got right down to business and not allow me get emotionally connected and you better not drag it out. So yeah, right now, like I said just now, everything is really going at a fast pace. Like everything is happening real, real fast. I mean, we already met the biggest bitch of the millennium, Wang Zin, in episode one. And yes, it is 2020 and Wang Zin is still a bitch 2020. He stays being a bitch. He is forever a bitch. That is who Wang Zin is trash. <laughs> like, please someone explain to me. Lonzi reminds me of like a boyfriend who was literal trash that you broke up with and instead of him to go better himself and come back and show you dude I'm better now he goes out he becomes even more trash and then he comes back and tells you hey look at me I'm like an upgraded version of trash don't you just like me <laughs> I'm like dude seriously and you like first you were trying to be the son of light and you were not the son of light and now you're trying to enforce yourself to be like the son of darkness and you think it's something to be proud of like how insane can you be like how twisted can your mind be long zine but then it's funny because in season one that's why i guess i said it's so lighthearted in season two because in season one i really hated long zine's character like i really couldn't stand the guy and it's funny because i watched some other dramas with him in it after that and i actually did like him but his character was just so freaking annoying and hateful in season one but in season, season, season two when he showed up i i was just looking at him like a joke he was literally a joke to me to the extent that i wasn't annoyed with him as i was in season one anymore so i guess that's a good thing about season two and more shan like i said also who i kind of just liked <laughs> for personal reasons of the romance and all that happened with Nizue in season one kind of grew on me in season two and i like how in season two right from the start they're revealing things to us in season one we knew why we knew that first brother was always team mo shan shan why second brother was always team sang sang but we never understood why first brother was always team mo shan shan 
I mean, we thought we knew it was because of the whole child of darkness thing where he thought that Sansang was daughter of darkness and she'd cause him trouble. But when you go to season two, and I'm not gonna spoil it for you if you haven't seen that part yet, but there's something that's revealed in Zeeling as to the relationship between first brother and Moshe Shen. They're like, oh, it all makes sense now why he was Team Moshe Shen and. At that point, I really didn't blame him anymore because one thing I really did not like about First Brother in season 1 was how he was always Team Moshe and Shen. Like, don't get me wrong, First Brother is my boo. I will always love First Brother. But that was just one thing that annoyed me about his character, how he was always Team Moshe and Shen. But upon entering season 2, I came to understand why he was Team Moshe and Shen when they made that revelation of your relationship. I'm like, ah, okay, you're not annoying me in this aspect anymore and it's okay we can keep going on like we are 100% cool right now but yeah something else that is still intact in season 2 that I really like is the brotherhood and the love they all have for each other and means way like the academy the king even though they changed the king this new king has kind of grown on me that I don't really miss the former king and this new king is so light-hearted like I said this whole season 2 is just so light-hearted and almost too loving <laughs> and stuff but yeah this new king is so light-hearted that I don't mind them changing him because I couldn't even envision the other king being so light-hearted and so like giddy in love with Ninzwe like yeah he loved Ninzwe in season 1 but this is just too blatant and too like look here I am biased towards it's kind of like the bible says Joseph I love Esau I hate it's literally like that where he is so biased about Minzwe and it is obvious to the whole world. I mean, he literally told Zuni if she if she wanted no, is it Zuni or Zinu? I I can't remember the old woman who was really annoying. He literally told her she can go die if she wants to, which literally made my entire year. And I wish he had just died because that lady is so effing effing annoying. Oh my goodness, I hated her in season one, and they just had to bring her back in the beginning of season two. And I'm like, bruh. I did not sign up for this. I mean, you could have brought her later and no one would complain. But anyways, that was literally one of my favorite parts of the entire drama so far where he where she basically came and told him try, try to threaten him with her life and this was like dude you're so smart if you want to die please die and do it fast like ain't nobody got time for you would all be happy if you died you think that's a threat that's a blessing <laughs> stop ever night season one still has that brotherhood that loyalty and stuff which i really love how literally people who love each other will go out of their way to do anything for each other and they've all got each other's backs when the time comes so I really really like that about Evernight 2 and I like how in Evernight 2 we don't really have like one main villain it's like us against the wall like the wall is coming for us so there's a number of villains who we'll meet along the way it's not just Yahoo and stuff so yeah I really really like that about Evernight 2 so so far I am enjoying Evernight 2 like I said it's not as deep as Evernight 1, the CGI was not as bad as I expected it to be from the trailer and stuff and the effects are not as bad. I mean, they're not season 1 good, let's just be honest with each other. Season 1 was just a level that I feel so sad that they could never attain again. But um, it's still good, it's just obviously not as good as season 1, but it's still good, it's okay, it's not as horrible as some other Woodyas and Zanzias out there, it's still better standard is what I'm trying to say it's not up to its own standard but it's still a close second and stuff so yeah I really like that about Evernight season 2 I really like how they're reintroducing us to the characters especially the ones who they changed the actors and the actresses in I love Fuzi forever forever Fuzi is my boo I don't think anyone understands how much I absolutely love Fuzi Fuzi is for me Gandalf if you don't know, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan and for me, Gandalf and Aragorn are like my two favorites in Lord of the Rings. So for Fuzi to get there, that really says a lot. Like literally, I was literally screaming when Fuzi came back on the screen. 
Something else I really like about season 2, if you loved it in season 1, is the OSTs. They kept most of the OSTs. Like the opening OST in season 2 is the same as the opening OST in season 1. They just changed like the graphics for visuals and what they show before the opening of the credits. The opening credits and stuff, that's the only thing they changed. The OST is still the same. But the ending OSTs are different. The ending OST for season 2 is a new song. They still have, um, uh, what's the name of the song? of uh, not old Chang and the other one there's another song that's most Sansang song they still have that in season two so they did keep the season one song for season two but they added something else which is nice and one thing I was really worried about is we would not get season one songs and those songs are literally my national anthem right now and they've so grown on me I didn't want that to be the case and thankfully that's not the case we didn't lose those songs so if you love the OSTs and you're wondering do we still have the OSTs Deborah? yes we do Ever Night is still a great drama, okay? It's still, especially for someone who writes like me, like right now, I'm currently writing a fantasy book and stuff, it just opens my imagination. It's like one of the best advices I can give to anyone who loves reading or writing and like you really don't limit yourself to one genre, watch Ever Night because it really opens your mind to different things and different imaginations and possibilities like nothing is impossible there's only an impossible <laughs> I was watching that in another drama but yeah um I really like Evernight season 2 I mean like I said it is not season 1 season 1 was literally 11 and I think it's just because season 1 had it's kind of like Nirvana and Fire Nirvana and Fire 2 was good but it can never compare to Nirvana and Fire 1 Nirvana and Fire 1 was literally a standard that was set so sometimes we, we get something so great that even if other things come out after that that are good, we don't recognize them to be as good as our first love because that first love was what introduced us to it. And so there will always be that sentimental value attached to it. So if you're not feeling Evernight Season 2 for that reason, that's totally, totally understandable and stuff. But yeah, I like it so far. Like I said, I was looking forward to it. It didn't disappoint me. Yeah, like I said, it doesn't have the depth and we're still trying to get used to the new light-heartedness of it. But so far, I am not complaining. At least, I am sure I'm probably going to get a kiss scene between Sansan and Wang Hedi because they are both adults this time and it's not Chen Fei Yu this time and stuff. So that's one good thing, I guess, to look forward to if you're into the romance side of Evernight. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on Evernight Season 2 if you've watched it. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to share and subscribe because you know I'm going to be reviewing more stuff which you're going to be coming back for. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you do not miss any of my reviews or first impressions from me to you all you know i've got something but love for you all stay awesome